Yes, can you hear me? Yes, can. Hi, nice um, meeting you. I'm pronouncing your name right, right? Ian? Yeah, Ian. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Ian. Thank you so much for joining us, Ian, in Marketing in the New Normal. And uh, you'll be talking about creating a localized buying experience for your e-commerce website. Because to how um, is it an advantage of having a localized uh, uh, buying experience, uh, especially during this COVID-19. So thank you so much for joining us. Take it away, all yours. And um, we will have the last 15 minutes for the Q&A session. Sure. sure. Are you able to see my slide now? Yeah, we can see your slide. OK, let's get started. Uh, maybe you want to make it full screen? Yep. Uh, OK, that's it. Thank you. All right, OK. Uh, Thank you for having me. Uh, I think it's a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so my name is Ian. So I'll be sharing with you uh, this interesting topic about how to create a localized uh, buying experience for your e-commerce uh, website. I think first of all, before I jump into the topic, uh, let me just wish everyone, uh, you know, uh, stay safe. I think we are in the in the midst of the COVID nineteen. Uh, stay positive. I think we know one day that you know this will be over. So um, I think before I jump to the topic now, uh, just to share a little bit more about the COVID-19, uh, I think we are still in the midst of it. It's not over, I'm based in Singapore. So, uh, but I think hopeful that, uh, you know, that will come to the end uh, very soon. I think uh, we just wait for, you know, uh, it just take times to, to, to let the cases to come down. Okay, now let me just start off with uh, uh, opening to, uh, you know, to ask, you know, some of you that, you know, what's your thought about the COVID-19? So I believe some of you might be, you know, running your own businesses, uh, even the e-businesses or online businesses. Now, how does it actually impact so far on, you know, by this COVID-19 on the businesses you are, you are running right now, right? So I believe that, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, that they probably come a two groups of uh, the kind of the, uh, the response, uh, you know, uh, we have. One, I think the hard truth is that, you know, this COVID-19, uh, like it or not, uh, you know, some businesses will, will, will have to struggle it through. My, you know, uh, eventually might come to, uh, you know, the final, you know, the uh, faithful shutdown, uh, you know, will be gone forever. I think that's a hard truth. But I think on the other side, uh, during this COVID-19 or even after COVID-19, I believe that the new emerging opportunities uh, will be there, right? So uh, I really like the Chinese word of the, you know, the crisis that it comes with the two character. Uh, for those who understand Chinese, uh, first character, it talk about the, the danger, it talk about the emergency during the crisis. I think what is interesting to know that for the second character, the opportunities will be there as well during a crisis. I strongly believe that, uh, you know, in any crisis that we go through, uh, it's also the step, a time opportunity for us to step back a little bit, uh, look at what we are doing as a business, uh, especially some of you might be running your online businesses. Uh, it has been uh, so successful, uh, you know, so far in the, in the past few years. But perhaps, you know, we take back, uh, step back a little bit to think about you know, uh, what is the, you know, the reality reality after the COVID-19? Where are going to grow your business? Where is your next growth for your online business? So this topic, uh, I'm sharing the, uh, my focus is really located into the Southeast Asia. I think this is where uh, I think that is the immediate markets for everyone, especially this period. Uh, I'm not sure some of you have actually explored to expand your business to uh, other Southeast Asia country. Uh, maybe this is the right time opportunity to look into that. Okay, so now let me just start off talking about, uh, you know, the importance of the localized, uh, the, the content for your online businesses. Now, let me just try to understand what you mean by the globalizations and the localization as well. Now, the globalization means that if you're running your business, uh, you're thinking, how am I going to expand my business activities to the different markets? It could be in the region. It could be the, in other region. All right. So we are talking about how to globalize uh, in you know, my businesses. Now, we talk about the localization. Uh, it's really talking about how can I make uh, you know, my product and my services to be more suitable in the specific target market. 
okay? So uh, I think localization not only just restricted to be, you know, uh, information, that includes the images, the text, you know, even the color, the theme of your brand. Uh, I think more importantly, we are talking about, especially in South Asia, we are talking about the different languages, the different cultures that, that we, uh, we have in Southeast Asia. So that's a reason why today, uh, you know, I need to talk about this localization, the importance of uh, localizing uh, some of the, the our website content. Okay. Now you might be wondering what is the you know the most successful or uh, the brand, the localized globalized brand that we we know in the market. Right. Now it's actually McDonald. I think everyone knows about McDonald. I mean, everyone tries and uh, patronize McDonald. I think McDonald is one of the, the most successful globalized businesses and also one of the most successful company who have managed to localize their product into a different markets as well. For example, uh, you know, whenever you go, you travel around the world, you want to have your, uh, you know, a Big Mac, you can only get it, you know, uh, you can recognize by the pictures and you know, things about. So um, that's the powerful of, you know, having the localized content to suit into the specific market so that uh, people can understand what they're buying and what they're getting as well, all right? So I think important that, you know, we are talking about right now, uh, we need to really thinking about re-strategize our business, how we are able to localize some of the product and services uh, available online to the specific market, especially in Southeast Asia. Okay, let me just quickly talk about the impacts of COVID-19. Now, um, that's a survey done by the Forbes uh, recently. You talk about, uh, you know, what are the, you know, for the businesses, what will be typical the impacts of COVID-19 uh, onto the businesses. Now, uh, I think first, I think I think all of you might have already felt that, you know, we know about it. Uh, because, of got it uh, because of the COVID-19 measures, uh, either the MCO in Malaysia, Singapore, we call it CB, uh, Circuit Breaker, a lot of businesses are temporarily closed at this moment. Okay. Now, even what we are also heard from the market right now is that even some of the businesses are also looking into a permanent shutdown as well. And recently, just this week or last week itself, that we know that you know this brand that we're all familiar with, um, you know, they will be shutting down all the stores in Asia, right? So this is how the, the negative impacts of the COVID-19 on some of these brands, uh, you know, that uh, household brand that we know, right? I think this is the hard facts, you know, we have been dealing with. Now, on the other hand, that we also seeing there are some consumer behaviors uh, during this uh, pandemic might eventually will become a permanent kind of practices, okay? First of all, one first example would be the online food delivery, all right? Now we can see that during this pandemic, we see that the huge surge of these online delivery requests. Um, in Singapore, we have we have got Grab Food. Uh, we have you know uh, many types of uh, the Food Panda, um, you know food delivery. Um, the apps that actually they can't cope really uh, because of the huge increase in the request and demand for delivered food. So uh, perhaps, you know, they are one of the only winners, you know, during this outbreak, okay? Now, I believe that, you know, after the COVID, this will become one of the, you know, uh, uh, normal as well. Now, the other so-called behavior we are seeing right now is that, uh, yeah, everyone, uh, you know, will start taking uh, more conscious about the hygiene and safety. Uh, uh, washing our hands, uh, sanitizing our hands, it's become, uh, you know, uh, everyday business right now. But I believe the, after the COVID-19, this practice might become a permanent one because I think I believe that, you know, we still have to deal with this uh, viruses even for a long time. Now, the other we see that uh, there's a big change in this during this COVID-19 are the digital services like, uh, you know, remote home services like, uh, Zoom, like uh, you can see that they also have a huge surge in terms of number of users just in a matter of days for 200 million to 300 million, despite they having some uh, hiccups uh, in terms of security issues right now. But uh, the fact is that, you know, they, they're having a huge surge in their businesses right now. So um, 
the last, I need to talk about the impact will be, I think not everything to be negative. Now, the positive for the COVID-19 will be, we are seeing a huge demand on the digital services uh, like uh, we have right now. Now, I'll give you an example in Singapore, for instance, that uh, you know, for buying grocery, online grocery shopping, um, it, it has, the, the volume has actually shoot up quite a lot. And even come to the point that uh, uh, a lot of deliveries, uh, you know, uh, uh, deliver services, they can't cope with the, the number of, uh, you know, uh, requests to deliver the uh, groceries to the doorstep, okay? So I believe this uh, COVID-19, uh, no doubt, it will affect some businesses negatively, but also give a lot of new opportunity for people who are, you know, already on the online business, like e-commerce as well, okay? So I uh, back to the, really my, you know the the statement i have uh, the purpose for this uh talk is about um this a global survey that saying that 72 percent of shoppers prefer buying the product in their native languages okay i believe this is a very much uh true okay although that this survey might done a couple of years ago i believe that as we and we ourselves are online buyer we see that you know we like to you know uh uh browse or something that we can understand uh, i believe that once you understand the product you actually uh, uh the description you actually create a trust and you can actually achieve the communication purpose all right it will eventually i believe that it will strong influence into the buying behavior right so um that's the first statement second um, you know, 60% of, you know, of the buyer are rarely transact with a website that only provide English only content. Okay. I think with, uh, these particular statements in the context of the global, uh, um, the website in the global context as well. So I believe that although that, you know, uh, the websites are dominantly by in English, but I believe that a lot of buyers, online buyers would still prefer, you know, who have the multilingual content okay so let me just dump quickly into you know the southeast asia market you know uh, how attractive it is i believe this uh it's a future growth uh, of the e-commerce market in this world so uh you don't understand you will understand that you know southeast asia and that complies 10 countries we have a 12 languages we all come from different backgrounds different culture and we speak different languages and dialects as well now, what are the actual potential for the, uh, especially talk about e-commerce, right? A huge potential for Southeast Asia. Uh, we are seeing the, the number of our mobile users in 2018, uh, you know, already we have about uh, 350 million. I believe right now, 2020, we probably hit 400 million plus. Uh, this is a growing numbers uh, year to year. So uh, generally speaking, the populations are young, are very tech savvy. Uh, and then we are actually uh, come from a very different uh, culturally and linguistically very different groups of buyer that we see, right? So in terms of e-commerce, uh, we are seeing there will be great growth potentials in uh, you know uh, from now on to twenty twenty five. This is the survey actually, or this is so called rather the reports done by the Google and the Tomasic. Now we're seeing there's a big potential for the e-commerce in Southeast Asia uh, in number of years moving forward. So the the um, the GMV is going to grow, uh, you know, a few times bigger than right now. So particularly, you look zoom into the country, we see that the Indonesia uh, is a huge uh, potential growth in terms of the e-commerce. They're followed by Vietnam, uh, Thailand, uh, Philippines, uh, the Malaysia as well. Okay. Now, if you're already running your own, uh, you know, online businesses, you probably will still very focus on your uh, home ground and say your own country. Now, uh, have you thought of, you know, uh, marketing your product and services in different country uh, to suit into different languages and different culture? Maybe this is the time that for you to think about the potential, how you can actually find growth for your online business in the near future. Okay. Now, if you take a look at these uh, e-commerce platforms that we have uh, in Southeast Asia, now uh, you can see that actually this is a very fragmented market uh, we, we see in Southeast Asia. I think primary reason is because of the different languages and different cultures we are living in. Okay, it's very unlike the US uh, market, which is dominantly, you know, 100% in English. 
uh, in Europe, we have 23 languages, major languages um, as well. But in Southeast Asia, we have different languages. China, we have only one language you can dominate. So uh, in a nutshell, you will see that single language e-commerce uh, uh, market, you tend to find a dominant player like Amazon uh, in US, uh, in China, we're talking about, you know, in Taobao and some of the, uh, you know, the local brand as well. So you always tend to see that one dominant players or leaders. But in Southeast Asia, you see that all uh, the many, many players, they have a different advantage in different countries. You might notice right now that, uh, you know, even some of the, the leading uh, e-commerce platform or why they're leading because they all actually, you know, uh, localize the product content into different languages. Okay, so today we're talking about in, in the digital space, we're talking about the content is very important. Every company to be successful, uh, an online business, it has to be run like a media company. We need to generate content because the content captures the attention of the buyers. Okay, so another challenge in today, we're talking about, you know, in the online business is about the shorter time to market. So we are talking about, you know, in terms of weeks or days, how we can actually launch our product, uh, you know, to the market uh, in a number of days, time, things like that. So it's a challenging how you're going to enter the content, how you're going to push out the content uh, to the onto the website or to your online store. Okay, so um, yeah, localized content is really the king, uh, especially in Southeast Asia. Uh, you have to deal with a multiple, uh, a multilingual content so, so culturally to fit into uh, a different market, so they influence the buyer, so that they are able to. Uh, you know, browse and buy your product to increase your conversion rate. So definitely, this is something that is important for you to consider that if you want to expand your business South Asia, you need to localize the content for specific markets. Okay, allow me to share with you that some uh, mistake that you know uh, that make in in the space of localization, translating the brand. Uh, people know about IKEA. You know that actually they also make a mistake in uh you know translating or localizing one of the brand one of the product uh you know things like that uh that will also include uh, uh kfc the something that we all know about uh there was a mistake made you know in china when they try to do literal translation from the chinese to the you know to the english that's you know this is the mistake they make okay now uh also include the electrolux, you know, how actually when they localize one of the, uh, the advertisement, uh, that's a mistake that I made by them. So you see that's important that we're talking about localization. We always try to get the right people to actually understand the culture, understand the linguist part to able to translate or localize your content and services. Okay. The other mistake that I make here, uh, for example, many years back, the Pepsi, you know, in China, when trying to actually market uh, Pepsi, you know, as a brand in China, they do make a, you know, uh, boo boo about their translation. They try to translate, you know, the English to the Chinese. Uh, wow, it's a very embarrass, uh, embarrassing message. They, you know, to translate to be as if like, it sounds like the Pepsi bring your ascenders back from the dead. Um, that's a quite embarrassing from the brand uh, perspective, right? So you see that's important that, you know, uh, that you need to get the right localization, uh, you know, to, to need to translate right of your brand as part of product and services, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's some others as well that, as I say, some are not related to just the text, but sometimes it could be the culturally that's, uh, you know, some of the localizations that will make a mistake as well. Uh, for example, that uh, we are now in a Ramadan period. Now for this, like example, and the one in the middle, the Pringles, that make a mistake of, you know, uh, promoting, you know, the flavor, the smoky bacon, you know, during Ramadan, that was really uh, culturally as really uh, insensitive, you know, to the, to the culture where people observe uh, Ramadan um, as well. Okay, so, um, I mean, I have time, but this is really to show that, you know, uh, this is what uh, could happen to your brand, some localization. Now, in today, we're talking about the, the old days of doing a translation, localizing, you know, might be failing because of, we're talking about, we're dealing with the new content, the e-content right now, uh, shorter, quite a time to market. 
So we really have to think about how to use the technology to help us to uh, to tackle the localization. Uh, let me just quickly share with you the um, the one the success story about you know uh, ASICs, right? Everyone knows about it. Um, you know how they actually uh, focus on the localization, how they actually they can build uh, their global brand, and also not only build uh, their global brand successfully, they also localize their contents in different platforms as well. Okay, so the ASICs here, um, they use the different applications, different platforms to connect, to communicate uh, with the, you know, uh, with their customers. Um, typically, their product, they all translate in, you know, uh, into 12 languages uh, across the 18 country. Now, they use the different languages to try to connect, to build, the, you know, uh, uh, the relationships uh, with the clients, right? Now, one of the... Uh, we're talking about localization. You know, uh, they are very, uh, they are very successful. They have been very successful. The use of some of the AI technology and some specialist uh, linguists to actually translate or localize some of the different types of content that they're dealing with. Now, in this chart, you will see that actually uh, some of the contents that circle in red. Uh, these are the content I can actually, uh, you know, um, use the the AI technology when and the linguists to work together to translate some of this content to localize this content, like e-commerce content and product description, and you can actually uh, react the cost savings on that because we are talking about you know not uh, getting the the specialist, uh, you know, to translate some of this content. Uh, specialist it tends to be cost is higher, so they'll try to actually how they. Uh, you know, uh, use the different techniques, different process to tackle the localization. Okay, at the end of the result, that uh, you know, there's a huge cost save, cost savings in terms of uh, you know, uh, um, they can save uh, some of the cost of translating, uh, localizing their product in the different languages. At the same time, they manage to bring across the message, the product into the different market. Right. So let's. Uh, come to the last part of my presentation now. How do you build a localized content? Okay. Now, in today, we are talking about you know your online businesses, and also you might be generating a lot of uh, marketing contents from time to time. Now, really, the one of the best way to actually build a localized content is actually use the technology. Okay. Now, one of the technology that uh, already uh, uh, you know. Uh, openly uh, publicly available we call api technology now api in other words and some uh, refer it as like plugin it actually enable that your your e-commerce size or your cms content management system to connect your website your portal to the translation platform now there are a few things actually that the benefits of doing that first it can actually minimize the data error, data transfer area. You do know that if you handle your data or some of your product data manually, it tends to actually make some mistake or some data might be missing out uh, in the transmission, things like that. First, you minimize the data and file area. Second, it will actually no longer uh, manual works needed, right? No longer a copy and paste. You don't have to download and upload your, uh, your website content. And all the content you need to be localized can actually send over via the API over to the translation platform. That's where the localization transitions are happening. Okay. Last, uh, of course, quicker time to market. All right. So uh, we are talking about in terms of weeks to get all the data prepared, to get it translate and upload. Now, in this concept of having API technology or automation, we are talking about in in the you know uh, in in the minutes or the hours that we are able to translate and push the data out to the you know via the website as well. Okay, so all this is the automated. Once you build up this uh, API connection, uh, the content can be actually sent it over to the translation platform, and once it's done, it will push it back to the portal for publishing. So really, in these techniques, uh, we are able to uh, really uh, make this process easy to reduce our multiple steps into really the four steps. Okay. Now, what are these four steps really? Once we need to do an API setup between the portal and the transaction platform. Second, and you push the source data. The data need the web pages that uh, you know it can be the HTML, uh, you know, format. Uh, push source data to the platform once the transition localization is completed 
and the son we call a target text and will be actually synced back with the CMS. Okay, so the last step before you publish is to just to make sure that you review it uh, at the back end of your website, uh, make sure everything is intact uh, before you publish, right? So bang, we make it very simple. We reduce it to be the four step to get your localized content to be up within a very short time, right? So um, just to quickly talk about, you know, uh, quick one, what we do as our ISA, I think we've been working on this technology for the last two years. So uh, I think our, our visions are really uh, to help the businesses, how we can simplify their localization process so that we, everyone we can meet the challenges today, huge content, shorter turnaround time, as well as that we can able to save 30% or 50% of the transition costs as well by using technology. Just a quick one that we have. Uh, I mean, we have already have the, so these are the automation tool in place. Uh, if you are, um, the CMS is running on the uh, your e-commerce or running on the WooCommerce um, or Machendo, we already have the plugins with automation tools that make available to actually automate some of this localization, right? And we also have our own in-house machine translation that will help to speed up the whole translations and again get the uh, uh, post editor, the human translator to do the vetting, the do the checking the, of the content to improve the quality. Okay. Now do check it out if you want to actually try out to you know the, our services. Uh, do take note of this URL. You can actually sign up to try out some of our real time translation. It's free right now. So it's free to sign up and free to use. Uh, you can actually upload some of the content to see how the content is being translated. It's free right now. Please take a look, go to the portal. Yeah. So, uh, right, I come to the end of my presentation. So uh, it's really for you to think about if, you, you know, uh, if you're looking for the next growth for your e-commerce, uh, you know, you're thinking about uh, Southeast Asia market, no matter where you are based, uh, do consider, you know, having the localized uh, content for your e-commerce site. Um, today, we are, we are talking about a lot of tools available to make this process simple and seamless. Uh, I hope that you do uh, really consider that is one of the strategy in moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we move into the Q&A session. Back to you, Fia. Hi, Ian. Thank you so much for your input. Um, great sharing regards to how um, branding works regards to localized business and consumers and all. And uh, I have one question though, regards to um, regards to branding in the local, uh, choosing the localized product. Why do you think consumers uh, prefer to use the uh, localized products? Yeah. I, I think you look at the uh, consumer behavior. I think we are also, you know, uh, online uh, buyers as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I think when we browse the product, we, uh, you know, we always look at, you know, uh, what this, you know, uh, what this product either functionally, how I can benefit from having this product. I need to understand about the product content. So that's why important mm -hmm. that. Uh, to have a very accurate to descriptions about, you know, uh, explain your product functionally, how it mm -hmm. actually can benefit you before, you know, a person will buy it. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think it's a very important or online. Uh, uh, for I think for the offline shopping, you can try and touch it. That's a very different. But you talk mm -hmm. about online, yeah. uh, the only things you really can see is, uh, you know, you really can feel about products are the, you know, the descriptions and the people review, you know, how people use it, you know, whether it benefit uh, or not. So I believe the content is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So me, uh, like what you mentioned, that it's also the trust that they build with the localized uh, brands that uh, traffics them towards the consumers as well. And I think we have a few questions here. Now, you spoke about auto-translation. Mm -hmm. Is there a risk of running into more errors? Auto or Google translation is never without errors. Um, 
I am high batu might be translated to water stone. That is true though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think one of the earlier slide I show uh, is really um, you know uh, uh, when I shared about success story about uh, ASICs, right? So now uh, and how they tackle the content is not a localization. Now uh, I actually show the charts that actually um, they were never uh, they were just dependent on the uh, you know AI technology and people commonly know about Google Translate. Right, because in the chart they also saw that just pure MT, right? It's not good for the brand, uh, not able to translate accurately. So until now, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think any uh, technologies were able to do it right now. Okay, but I think what how the ASICs to tackle some of this content, we talk about the hybrid model. Uh, we having an MT plus the some of the translator, the language to work on the content. Okay, it's cheaper because. The effort of a human is much less. And also mm -hmm. in the chart, they show that, you know, what kind of content. Now, we have to be uh, very careful here when we talk about the types of content that will be suitable for, you know, for the MT, we call it MT plus, the human touch, right? So mm -hmm. um, the, the chart actually, they show that for the e-commerce content, product description, now user generated content, like a blog article, this might be good for using the hybrid model. Okay, mm -hmm. but if you're talking about brand message, talking about marketing content, right? Generating marketing content, um, the best so called is to get the so called the copywriter we call the kind of human intelligence to work on it. I think they have they they draw the big distinguish uh, between the marketing content and the non marketing content, which is more e commerce, the more product and services description. So mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so try not don't yeah don't use a google to translate your brand so you go it will be the disaster so <laughs> in the way that we need to know uh you know how we are able to gain more knowledge how we can tackle some of this process to make sure that um we're able to optimize the cost from that okay and um i think if you guys have any questions for ian do put it in the comment section we have about um uh, we have a few more minutes then we can take up the question then we can wrap up the session yeah. And um, okay, how many payment gateways supported? Is it included e wallet payment gateway? Uh, sorry, your, your question again. This question How many payment gateways supported? Is it included uh, e way payment gateway? Okay, um, I believe that this question is talking about okay, uh, uh, before that, that uh, right? be so, before, before you answer that question, I think there's one person asking for the translation slide. Um, that you can you projected they just want a screenshot maybe after you answer this question maybe you can show them back the slide they just want sure, a screenshot. Sure. Yeah. thank you melissa for the question i uh, will just do it after this question okay so i need to answer the the, the e-wallets thing yeah okay um I, I think the question you're relating to 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 the solution right so i just try to clarify the questions um um, it's from Justin. The question is from Justin. Like, how many payment gateways supported? Um, E-wallet e payment gateway is also included. I felt oh, like that's okay, cool. okay. I, I see, yeah. I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. If if you're running like, let's say you have the E-wallet platform, things like that, that the things like that. Um, yeah, I think it will be supported in the future. I think what we are doing right now is that we also looking into some of these uh, popular e, uh, we call it uh, digital platform that including like, you know, e-payment that uh, we are able to uh, so-called to build the we are plugin with using an API to this, uh, some of this uh, uh, like, you know, e-wallet platform as well, because uh, there are many, many in the markets right now. So especially in South mm -hmm. Asia, we've got like iPay 88, we have, you know, different types. Uh, yeah, I think uh, in moving forward, uh, this is what our focus as well. So we are not just working on the few uh, so-called platforms. We are, as we grow our business, we are looking to connecting this platform to different uh, digital platform as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you for the answer. There's the question from Justin. And um, would you like to show the uh, slide of your uh, translation portal? Maybe Melissa can screenshot. Um, yes, uh, this is probably the when this is the diagram to show uh, typically for the e commerce stores that we are already uh, available. If you are running WooCommerce, we are having 
uh, WooCommerce or Machendo as your uh, online store. Uh, we already mm -hmm. have our plugins. We can actually, uh, you know, build this connection within a minute to 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 try it out. So, um, but this is the so-called the CMS model. We're talking about the other type of platforms. We will need to, uh, yeah, customize the API to build that connection to a different platform. Okay. So um, this is how it look like. We make it simple. Um, uh, you can notice that actually uh, the one who really control the content to be, uh, uh, you know, to be localized are the the your website administrator. All right, the clients have absolutely control over the content and what need to be translated, what need to send over. Now, once the send over from outside, you know, uh, our platform, we will get the, you know, uh, uh, do the localizations. We will uh, engage the, uh, you know, the translator that fit the uh, purpose, you know, understand your content um, and to translate. Now, once it's done, we will push it back to the to your website as well so you just need to open up uh, you can actually have an online looking the status about how far you've been progressing in terms of the localization so at the end once it's back to your uh, you know to your web portal back end uh, you can click open and take a look at the translated text you know is everything's okay you can preview it uh, you know everything's fine and you just publish so we are talking about in terms of a very short time that you're able to push up uh you know the content uh in different languages as well and right we always try to uh, you know uh advise the client uh, let's say you start off with english you just keep it as english and then you let you know the other languages to be you know uh to work out you know uh, uh using the platform as well okay mm -hmm. so i hope yeah. that's explained to you you know mm -hmm. uh, how to work it out yep. uh, i hope yeah, melissa hope. managed to screenshot um i think Next up, it's a bit one more question. In general, mm. is localization in bracket distributing a global product with sufficient localization is a good strategy? Yes, I think so. Uh, if you if you if you look at the, I mean, uh, let's talk about Indonesian market. Um, mm. The whole population is uh, almost about three hundred and fifty million. So now, if you want really want to actually expose your product and services into the domestic market, now it's very hard because uh, the domestic market buyers, they may not understand the English. All right, so that's also powerful that you need to localize. And I mentioned here, when you talk about localizing your product and services, uh, don't get me wrong, is uh, we are not just doing the text, we are also doing as the images as well. Some of these culturally sensitive things that we also look into as well. We used to suggest that, you know, you might use some of the images. Okay. Now, you really you want to influence the local domestic buyer, and you need to localize it. Okay, especially in South Asia. In certain country, English might be good. In Singapore, I think English is everyone speak English, understand English. Uh, I think in Malaysia as well. I think in the, I think in the clan area, I think generally people understand the English. But maybe you move into more a rural area, uh, maybe Bahasa Malay will be the best localized mm -hmm. product to get into the you know the domestic buyer. So I see that's an important uh, uh, strategy to grow your business. If you are, you know, you've been doing very well in your English, uh, you know, content uh, English buyers do consider non-English buyer because it's a huge potential in Southeast Asia. Okay. Um, if there's any more questions for Ian, please put it in the, into the comment section. If not, uh, would you like to do any wrap up? Um, uh, I think, I think Melissa managed to screenshot. She said, thank you. Um, if you men, if you want to do any wrap up before we, uh, do a conclusion, then. Yeah. Um, I, I think to yeah. just to sum up that uh, you know, uh, the sharing I have, I think important that if uh, the main strategy in moving forward, you know, we are looking at about post COVID nineteen, right? What is the new norm uh, for the e business? I think the new norm for the e e business. Mm -hmm. I think remember there are two words: content. Okay, we need to generate content. Okay, every businesses need to generate content. Okay, that's the way to go. Uh, second keywords will be if you're looking for you have been doing well in the one market do uh, consider the other market as well 
and you need mm-hmm. to start expanding your business. Uh, I mean, the you know the lesson we learned in so many you know crises in the past that we cannot just depend on one market, especially on online. You need to think about you know diversify your risk by looking into different markets. Southeast Asia is just that uh, you know uh, our next door, like you or not. So um, that's a huge potential. If you know, uh, I think it's it's really a right strategy for you to localize or to start thinking about how do I turn out a multilingual uh, e-commerce store to tap on the Southeast Asia market as well. So I think that's what we the you know that sum up the my presentations you know okay. uh, for those yeah for today. Okay, Ken. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you so much for sharing your inputs. Thank in you. Thank you for inviting me. So marketing in the know. new normal. Yep. Thank you so yeah. much for joining <laughs> us as well and supporting yeah. this initiative. Yeah. Very, very glad to have you on board. And I really hope that all of them uh, learn something. And I'm sure uh, from the question that they're asking, I, I really, I'm really very sure that they're learning something. And I think one thing that I also noticed regards to the consumers going to going back to the local is the fact that. Um, they have more trust, that's one, but it also comes back to that they want to give the support to the local during this time. And especially during this time, they're going back to the, the local brands, local um, uh, manufacturers, and it, it, it's a thing that they want to support them during this time. So that's, that's a very input that you've given. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, my, my pleasure. <laughs> Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Exabytes. Grow your business online.